Starkland Foundry is a toolkit for developing smart contracts for Starkland. It consists of two modules, SNCast, which offers a command line interface for interacting with Starkland, and SNForge, which allows writing tests and running them. For the purpose of this guide, we will be focusing on SNForge. First, let's install SCARP, which is necessary for using Starknet Foundry. SCARP is a package manager for Starknet that we also use to compile contracts in tests. We need to install it before we can start using Starknet Foundry. We will use ASDF version manager to install SCARP. Let's install the latest version. And now let's set it as a default one. We can verify the installation of SCARP using the command SCARP version. After successfully setting up SCARP, it's time to proceed with installing StarkNet Foundry. We will use the same version manager as before. And now let's in install the latest version. As you can see, the latest version is 0.17, so let's set it as a default one. Now, let's verify that StarkNet Foundry has been installed correctly. As mentioned before, we will be focusing specifically on the SNForge component of StarkNet Foundry, so let's check its installation. The recommended way of creating a new project is by typing SNForge in it, followed by the project's name. So let's name our project new project. Great, the project is now created and we can continue with the development. First, let's go over the project structure. The ESRC directory contains the source code of the whole project. Note, it contains the libcairo file. This file is necessary and must not be removed or renamed. Later, when we create other files, we will use the libcairo file to define necessary modules. The test directory contains our tests. This is the most important directory for SNForge. We will get to writing tests in just a while. SCARP-TOML contains all configurations of our package, including the configuration of SNForge. Note the SNForge STD and StarkNet in the dependencies. These are necessary for Foundry tests to run. SNForge STD is a library containing all special functions from SNForge, which we'll use to test our contracts. Same goes for CASP equals TrueLine. It is required so that our contracts compile to a format expected by SNForge. SCARP block is generated by the SCARP automatically. We don't have to concern ourselves with its contents right now. For now, our package is configured correctly and we don't have to change anything in the SCARPTOM file. The libcairo file contains a simple StarkNet contract that stores a balance for each user. We already have some basic tests defined in the test contract Cairo file, but let's create some on our own so we can learn the necessary steps. We want to test if the contract stores and updates the balances correctly. First, we will focus on just getting the balance from the contract. We define a test by creating a standard function and marking it with the test attribute. To 
test our contract, we first need to declare and then deploy it. This reflects the flow of creating a contract on the actual Starknet network. We declare the contract using the declare cheat code. Cheat codes are special functions defined in SNForge STD which allow doing non-standard operations from within the test. To use declare, we need to import it from the SNForge STD package. Then we simply call it with the name of the contract we want to deploy. After the contract has been declared, we can create an instance of it by calling a deploy method and providing arguments for the constructor, which are called call data. In the case of Hello Starknet contract, we will use an empty array of the call data as it doesn't define a constructor. To simplify interactions with contracts, Starknet Foundry uses dispatchers. These are simply objects that are automatically generated by the Cairo compiler based on the Starknet interface trait we define alongside the contract. The interface provides all same methods as the contract does. Now we need to create an instance of the iHello Starknet dispatcher. There are many kinds of dispatchers, but for the purpose of this guide we will use the basic one. we need to import it as well. Okay, now that we have a dispatcher, we can start interacting with the contract. To check the initial balance of the contract, let's call its getBalance method. We want our contract to have an initial balance of 0. To verify that, we can utilize the assert keyword. Assert will evaluate whatever expression is provided inside the brackets and fail the test in case it evaluates to false. Now we can execute our test. We can mark other tests as ignored to ignore them. we will get the clearer output. To run our tests, enter the command SNForge test. Make sure your terminal is open in the directory in which the scarp.toml file is defined. You should see that one test was run and succeeded. We need to unwrap the result. To test the change in the balance of the contract, we are going to call increase balance through the same dispatcher previously used. Note that this function does not return any value. Generally speaking, the methods that modify the state of the contract, like increasing a balance, do not return any values. Great. Now let's query the contract again and add an assert to check if the balance did actually increase.
Now we can run the updated test. Let's extend our contract so it's a bit more complicated. Imagine that you want to only allow the user with the address 1 to increase the balance. Other users can just query the contract for the value. First, we need to get caller's address in the increase balance method. We need to import a relevant method and a struct, so let's do that. Now we will get the color address inside the function and verify it is equal to 1. We've also used into method. It is required so we can convert the contract address type returned by the getColor address function into field, a base type in StarkNet contracts. Ok, now let's run the test we've written before, it should fail now. As we expected, the test failed. This is because our address is not 1, so we cannot invoke the increase balance function. But what if you wanted to verify that it works if the address is 1? As mentioned before, cheat codes are special functions in Ensenforge that allow modifying things in tests that wouldn't be allowed on the actual StarkNet network. We've already used declare cheat code, but for this scenario we will use the star prank function. This cheat code changes our address to 1, so we can pass the address verification. We need to import the relevant method and the struct. Now we can change the color address simply by calling the imported function. Cheat target allows specifying the contract which will be affected by the cheat code. In the case of start prank, the second argument is the color address we want to set. And with that, the test should run successfully. We have successfully changed our address to 1 and made the test run. This is just a simple example of what cheat codes can do. SNForge offers a variety of cheat codes enabling modifying multiple parameters of the contract and the color, signing messages with few cryptographic algorithms and more. And that's it. We've successfully created a simple contract, added tests to it, added address verification to our contract, and tested it.